Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I think I'm going to start off my presentation and my talk by giving you just a brief sample of what our airmen experience in their, during their workday. I hope you can experience or uh, understand the challenges that face our airmen trying to communicate in these different soundscapes. One of the things that they have to do within this soundscape is to try and hear out a critical message or a target sound that is embedded in these complex soundscape. And their ability to do so will mean the difference between whether they will succeed in their mission or they will fail in their mission. To our airmen, and they have told us this, that effective and efficient communication is the most important weapon. Now it turns out that this problem is not a trivial problem. It's a very challenging problem. And why is that? This is because our airmen are cast and crew in a cocktail party scenario. And my team at AFRL is in the fortunate position of studying the behavior of these airmen in the cocktail party scenario. Now I know what you're thinking. The government does not pay me to study the behavior of inebriated people, <laughs> nor do they fund research in a bar. When I talk about the cocktail party, what I mean, what, I referring, what I'm referring to is the ability of a person to tune in to a specific voice and tune out all the remaining voices that are acting as interferers to your ability to hear that message. Now, I am going to challenge you as an audience to see whether or not you could hear out a critical message in the sound clip that I'm just going to play. Now, as human listeners, if I ask you to hear that critical message, a very critical message in that babble or a cocktail party uh, chatter, it's a trivially easy task for your brain to do that. But it turns out that the engineering feat that is required for a machine or any kind of automated system to pick out a single voice from that babble is surprisingly difficult. It's a very challenging task. So let's go back to the cocktail party scenario. And I'm going to play you the simplest of all cocktail party scenarios. <laughs> The one that you heard was pretty dense. Now I'm going to play you a sound clip that involves two people. There are two people in this cocktail party. They're talking simultaneously. And we know that the critical message in this case is spoken by a female talker. So I want you, as experts in this cocktail party task, as subject matter experts in this cocktail party task, to try and listen for what the female talker said in this mixture. And I know that we are. Uh, most of you here work in the Air Force, and we love a challenge. So if you hear the message the first time, I will play the message for you again. So try and see if you can hear both the messages by the female speaker as well as the male speaker. Ready, Ready Charlie, Charlie, go to, to white five now. now. Ready, Ready Charlie, Charlie, go to, to white five two now. now. So the female speaker, if you heard her say the phrase, Ready, Charlie, go to white five now, you can all pat yourself on the back and thank your auditory system and your brain for untangling that message. Now, what do you think would happen if you held up your smartphone or your computer and tried to figure out that message? I would be surprised if you get anything other than gibberish when you ask your smartphone to do the exact same task that you did. So how difficult is this problem? If I have to train just a, if I had to take just a brute force approach and train a machine to do this task, 
what I would do is train the machine with the exact same characteristics of the two speakers you heard in the mixture. So train it with the speaker characteristics. I would train it using the entire vocabulary set that these two speakers would speak. And remember, this is a very limited vocabulary set. It's just a call sign and a color number combination. If I had to do that with this machine, it would take the machine 83 minutes to do what you as an audience did in under four seconds. It's two repetitions under four seconds. And so that's how challenging this task is. So then you have to ask yourself, why are we doing this? Um, and so what is the goal of our research in this, in this, uh, under this effort? Well, one of the goals of our, um, our research effort is that problem, the speed segregation problem. But we try to achieve that by trying to understand how humans solve this problem by studying their research and by studying the cues that they use to hear out a target in that mixture. But our ultimate goal in that research effort is so that we can find a computational solution to the cocktail party problem, a computational solution that we believe has to, be, has to inherently mimic human biology because despite decades of doing research in that area, we have not been able to come up with a machine that does this task as well as, but even better than human beings in some cases. I have to admit that part of my interest in doing research in this area is very selfish. You've all been in a situation where, at least I've been in a situation, where I have my two kids sitting in the back, I am in the car with the radio on and trying to send a message via text to a colleague at work who needs something very urgently. And it's extremely frustrating. You pull up at a stoplight and people think you're crazy like you're trying to devour your phone, right? And we've all been in that situation. So part of my reason to find a computational solution is very selfish. But the other reason is we have to ask ourselves, what about our airmen? What is it about this research topic that makes lives for our airmen easier in these cocktail party scenarios? Well, the, we, are, we are trying to tackle two problems by uh, coming up with the computational solution for the cocktail party problem. The first problem is that speech is very transient. You speak the message once and it's gone. So we want to create a persistence of the message that was being spoken. The second problem that we are trying to solve is that, I don't know if you've experienced this, but when I played you the cocktail party scenario, you probably noticed that your attention was captured by the person I asked you to attend to. Your attention was captured by the female talker, and if you were perfect cocktail party listeners, you should have registered almost nothing of the male speaker. And this could very easily happen in an operational scenario where you have two critical messages that are coming in simultaneously. Even if that was not the case, what we want to do is make the message persistent, have the ability to, to kind of decipher all the messages, because it's possible that the airman might have missed a critical message that would inform his decision further down the road. So those are the two big reasons why we want to find a, a computational solution for this cocktail party problem. But that's more far term. What can we do in the near term? Now think back to the cocktail party scenario and think about what you do as listeners in this cocktail party scenarios. One of the single most important cue that we use is spatial hearing. Now I know that all of you have been in conversations in cocktail party where you're seemingly engaged with a person who is in front of you who is probably carrying on a very boring conversation and your attention is almost instantaneously captured by a conversation that's going on at another location in space. Humans have an ability, amazing ability to listen in space. You, they can use space to hone in their attentional filters very, and they can tune them very finely to that specific location in space. We've done work in our lab where we can recreate these locations in space virtually over stereo headphones. What this does is give our airmen the ability to listen in different locations in space and use this natural ability that we all have. So what do they have right now? Right now, every single message that comes in 
to the airmen come in through a monaural channel. This means that this is very similar to every single person in a cocktail party scenario, and their cocktail parties can contain up to eight or 10 messages coming in simultaneously. It's very akin to eight or 10 people occupying the exact same location in space. It is as if they are stacked right on top of each other, which makes it very difficult for them to decipher the message. Now I'm gonna play you a sample of the spatial hearing. Keep in mind, this is a very simple demo. We can render about nine locations in space and we have data that shows that it works very effectively for segregating up to nine separate channels. So the initial demo I'm going to play you is a monaural task. This is what our airmen experience uh, currently. Ready, Ready Charlie, go, go to, to Green 6 now. now. Ready, Ready Charlie, Charlie, go, go to, to Green 6 now. now. Now this is a spatial demo, as an, an, and as an audience, I would I ask you to attend either to the left channel or the right channel. Ready, Ready Charlie, go, go to Green 5 6 now. now. Ready, Ready Charlie, go, go to Green 6, six now. now. And hopefully you could have a sense for how easy it is to switch your attention between the left and right channel and find it very dis easy to decipher the message. This is an immediate technological solution that we have available and that we can very easily implement. If these two technological solutions is the only thing we could transition, and we have transitioned portions of this to the Air Force, that would be great. Uh, but we are the Air Force, right? So we always do more. <laughs> in fact, that's become a motto in our branch recently. We do more with less. <laughs> so the third solution that we want to do is not only like the second challenge, the speech segregation challenge, not only do we want our computers to hear and listen like a human in a cocktail party, we want our computers to speak like a human in a cocktail party. And this is very creepy to some of you, I can imagine. But think about what you have today. Think about all the devices that are chattering at you today. And think about the voices that are being used in these cocktail party chatters, right? These are very synthetic voices. They have absolutely no intonation. They are very stilted. Think about 10 years into the future. I expect that in the cocktail party that our airmen experience today, there are going to be some new players in that cocktail party. There are going to be some synthetic agents and robots with varying capabilities that show up at that cocktail party. Now imagine yourself at one of those cocktail parties uh, and you get a voice message, a voice alert from your child's phone, uh, school telling you that your child is sick. If you choose to receive that message in the synthetic voices that you have today, I can guarantee you that message would be lost in the mixture, in the chatter. But now imagine if you receive that message in the exact synthesized voice of your spouse, and maybe even mimicking this panic that your spouse would have when she narrated, he or she narrated that message to you. I guarantee you that would grab your attention in, in a cocktail party of humans and robots. So I wanna reassure you and tell you that you have no worries that you will have a mechanical bartender that takes your drink orders, but I will also tell you, and I hope that the era of robust, intelligent, and seamless audio interactions is now here today. Thank you.